Hey y'all, this is Troy Black. So I have a prophetic word to share with you about Donald Trump. This is something the Lord shared with me back on December 21st of 2023. Uh, he asked me to go ahead and share this publicly, and that's why I'm doing that. But I do feel led to share this first, a very brief kind of intro. If you're new to this channel, or if you've watched some of my videos and you have a big question mark over your head, and you're wondering why am I on here sharing prophetic words almost three or four times a week, it seems like, um, how on earth could anyone hear from God that often? I would point you to a couple different passages in scripture. The first one is the word of God talks about how God spoke with Moses as with a friend face to face. So God had this relationship with Moses. He was a great prophet in the Old Testament that he didn't have with everybody else, right? He, he related to him in a way that you would relate to a friend. He did the same thing with Abraham in a lot of ways. But the word of God also talks about how, and I believe it's Hebrews, that talks about how we as believers in Jesus Christ are actually under a better covenant than Moses was. The covenant is how we relate to God today, the new covenant that was bought for us through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. We are able to relate to God in a better way than Moses was. So if Moses spoke with God face to face as with a friend, and yet we're under a better covenant than Moses was, what does that mean for us believers today? It means we are able to walk as friends with the Lord. We're able to hear God's voice clearly on a regular basis. We don't have to be some super saint, some super apostle or something up way up here, you know, like high and mighty. We can just be normal believers and we can hear the voice of God. How does that work? It's through number one, being saved, through knowing Jesus as our Lord and Savior, through actually repenting of our sin and turning our life over to him and putting our trust fully in what he did for us at the cross, that when he died, he was taking the full punishment for our sins upon himself. So we have to start there. We have to be one of his sheep. You know, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. We've got to be a sheep. That means we've got to be a follower of Christ. We've got to put our full trust in him. It can't just be a religious thing that we're doing. We can't just be going to church just to go to church and call ourselves a Christian. No, we have to know Jesus personally. We have to really put our faith in what he did for us. We have to realize that we needed that. We were sinners. We needed saving. And Jesus came to save us when he died for us. But then number two, we have to be filled with the Spirit. Now, every believer receives the Holy Spirit when they are saved. But that does not mean that every believer has fully surrendered their life to the power of the Holy Spirit. See, the Word of God says, don't be drunk on wine because that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. And the implications there from the original language are, continue being filled. What does that sound like? It, it means continue diving deeper into this relationship. And knowing God is not knowing facts. It's not knowing theology. It's knowing a person. And that happens through the Holy Spirit walking with us daily. So all of that to say, why am I on here sharing these words? It's not because I'm special. I'm not. I know I'm not. I'm just trying to be obedient to what the Holy Spirit is asking me to do. And listen, God can speak to you clearly through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he can confirm whether someone like me is from him or not. And you should be going to the Lord and asking for that confirmation if you need it. So these prophetic words do not come from me following the news and praying for prophecy, you know, or, or saying, God, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? I don't do that. These words come from me simply going into the secret place with the Lord, simply turning on worship music or reading the Bible spending time with God, and then he just begins to speak. That's it. And I believe that's what God is leading us all back to today is, are we searching for something else or are we searching for God for a reason other than just to be with him? And I believe the Holy Spirit is wanting to bring our hearts back to the most important thing, which is God himself, a personal relationship with him. This is what I heard on December 21st. I heard the Lord say this about China. He said, China is amassing an army for a single purpose. And before I read the rest of this, I got this impression that this was hyperbole. He's using language that we would recognize that would raise red flags, but it doesn't mean that it's word for word exactly the way it is. But he said, China is amassing an army for a single purpose to take over, to take control over free people. And then I heard that is their purpose, what they want. Then I heard they need to fulfill something bred deep within them that will not shut up. And then he said, fear drives them. There's this motivating fear or motivating voice deep within that's driving them, right? 
And then he said, fear of not doing great things or being enough. So the Lord is setting up this word about Donald Trump, and he's talking about China. And at first, I didn't think these words went together. The Lord did not allow me to make a separate video about this word about China. He said, no, these go together. So I had to add that to this. The next thing the Lord said that night, December 21st, was Donald Trump is doing more than just ruling for eight years. Now, let me step back for a moment and say this. Now, this is me and my interpretation and my side note, okay? I don't know if the Lord is saying that Trump is going to rule for eight years or not here. I don't know if that's specifically what he's saying, but what he is saying is Donald Trump is doing more than just ruling for eight years, okay? So please take in mind the way that he's saying it. And, and the reason I'm saying that, I'll explain that after the fact, but this is the next thing I heard. He is revitalizing the people's view of America and the rest of the world and how they view the USA. He is showing the people again what they truly believe. And then I heard they believe him to be instilling or inspiring something inside of them, but it was there all along. So I believe the Lord is saying some people think that they're getting something from Trump specifically that was already there, essentially. And then I heard the Lord say, even beyond Trump will remain an effort to enlist those who behave like him because of the reminder he gave the world. A wake up call to the people who have been sitting by watching things occur without comment. Now, some of that is common sense. You can kind of look at the conservative side of things or the Republican Party and see just the motivating factors behind why Trump rose to power in 2016 and all that kind of stuff. But if the Lord is saying it, I'm going to share it the way I heard it. So I believe it's important to share it that way. Then I heard the Lord say many of those currently in power today would be okay with being dominated by another nation as long as they themselves were not on the bottom. Whoa. Yeah, that's that's intense, y'all. Me just reading it right now, that's intense. And then I heard the Lord say, if they were favored, they could stand it, but not a man like Donald Trump, not if he had something to say or do about it. So I believe there's an implication happening here about why, and I got this other word from the Lord about whether God wanted Trump in power or not, you know, and I, I'll, I'll link that below. You can go watch it if you want, whether God wants Donald Trump in power or not. Why does God take the, the view he takes on Trump? I believe this is kind of answering that question a little bit. And then I heard, there is another who would do the same in the current circumstances. I believe he's talking about another candidate for the 2024 elections, right? And he said, people have overlooked him to an extent, but he would fight for their rights in the world stage the same way as Trump. So the Lord's saying there is another person that would do the, the same thing that Trump is doing, but people have kind of overlooked them. And then I heard Donald Trump will be in power once more. And then I heard he will reign again. It's only a matter of time. And then I heard Trump's schedule is about to change, shift gears. And then I heard I'm changing it. So the Lord's saying he's changing it. All the distraction is going away for a time. That's what I heard. Okay. A few quick side notes here. Did the Lord say that Trump is going to win in 2024? Not specifically. No. Now, some people will make jump to conclusions. They'll make that connection, right? Automatically based on what I shared here. But the, this is what the Lord put on my heart earlier today to share and it's just this idea that sometimes we hear a word from God and we jump to conclusions or we make an assumption about what God would say in an instance. My friend Jacob, who he, he helps me edit a lot of these videos earlier today. We we're talking on the phone about this video specifically, the word that I heard. And one of the things that he said was, he said, don't jump to conclusions. Don't jump to conclusions. And as soon as he said it, I felt the power of God in that moment. And then I heard the Holy Spirit echo the same thing. The Holy Spirit said, don't jump to conclusions. Now, I don't think Jacob knew that he was prophesying when he said that, but I believe he was because as soon as he said that, the Holy Spirit said, don't jump to conclusions. Listen, y'all, even with a word like this, the Lord is saying, don't jump to conclusions. Okay. But there's a deeper message here that the Lord is trying to get across to us. And this is what the Lord reminded me of is 2 Samuel 7, 2 through 5. And it says that the king said to Nathan, the prophet, this is David talking to Nathan, the prophet. Now I live in a house of cedar, but the ark of God remains within the tent. Nathan said to the king, go do all that is in your mind for the Lord is with you. Another translation says, go do everything you want to do for God is with you, right? And then it says, but in the same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, go and say to my servant, David, this is what the Lord says. Should you build me a house for my dwelling? So he's, he's asking the question, should you build me a house for my dwelling? Did I tell you to do this? And then he goes on to explain how his son Solomon is going to build the temple, not David. But what was Nathan's response? Listen, why was David asking Nathan if he should build a temple for God or not? It's because Nathan was the voice of God to that nation. So he was taking Nathan's response, the prophet's response, as the word of God. Yet it wasn't in this case. And why not? 
Well, it could be that Nathan was jumping to conclusions and that Nathan was assuming what God would say and he didn't realize the weight that his response carried. Or it could just be that Nathan was saying, yeah, it seems like God's been with you all along. Go ahead and do that. You know, and he wasn't trying to speak for God. And David was the one jumping to conclusions. But either way, someone was jumping to conclusions until the word of God came. And then God had to speak specifically and set straight Nathan, the prophet and David, the king. And this is what I hear the Lord saying for us today. Don't make it to where I have to set you straight after the fact. You hear from me ahead of time. Don't jump to conclusions. Don't make assumptions about what I would say or do. The Lord is saying this year especially. Y'all, this is election season. This is election year. It's going to be easy to jump to conclusions, especially with a word like this where, where the Lord is saying Trump will be in power once more. It's easy to jump to a conclusion, meaning like, well, then God must mean this year. I don't know. God didn't say that. What did God say? Trump will be in power once more. He will reign again. Did he say he will be president again? Not specifically. So could he be referring to another form of power? Yes. Even with the word I recently shared, I shared a word recently, I'll post that link below, where God told me who would be president of the United States. Now, he used descriptive language to describe somebody. He didn't give me a name. But at the end of that video, I said, hey, there's something you could go Google that would show you a very detailed connecting point to one of the candidates between the word God shared and one of the candidates. And it connects very closely, right? But does that mean that that's who God is talking about? Not necessarily. I don't know. Now, it would be easy to jump to conclusions, but the Lord's saying we shouldn't jump to conclusions. Listen, y'all, this is not about a president. This is not about even Donald Trump. It is, but it isn't. See, the Lord is trying to connect this message to something deeper that's happening in many of our hearts today. Let me read what I heard earlier today. The Lord said, don't jump to conclusions about my word and what it is I'm doing upon the earth today or what I want to do in and through your life. Many of us are making decisions based on what we assume God would say. And we're treating prophecy and the voice of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit almost like a guessing game. I just sense the Holy Spirit saying, you were never intended to have to guess at what my voice is telling you to do. I intended for you to hear clearly from me because that's what a good relationship looks like. I just sense the Lord saying this in a loving way. He's not being judgmental, y'all. But he's just saying many of my people haven't waited in the still and the quiet place for that still small voice. And the Lord's saying that. And then there are others who have not allowed me to strip the personal opinions off enough in order for my voice to actually come in and make a difference. Because sometimes, y'all, our personal opinions just get in the way of what God is trying to say to us. If you want to hear God clearly, let me give you a, a piece of advice. Humble yourself. And I'm not perfect at this, y'all. I'm not. It's a constant struggle sometimes, a constant battle. But Paul said, let's not think more highly of ourselves than we ought. That's the Apostle Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He had a better, clearer revelation of what Jesus did in the gospel message than anyone else. He even said that it wasn't even him doing the work. It was the grace of God working through him. Some of us are carrying around, we're carrying around these heavy, weighty opinions on all the matters, on politics, on life, on religion, on theology, on, on all these different things, on the scripture. And it's like some of those things are good. We do need to arrive at conclusions, but we always need to be willing to allow the Holy Spirit to correct us. Because at the end of the day, if it's just our opinion, we could be wrong. And this is what happened to Jesus. Matthew 27, 39. This is during the crucifixion, okay? Those passing by were speaking abusively to him, shaking their heads and saying, you who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. What does that sound like? It sounds like what the devil said to Jesus in Matthew chapter four. He said, if you are the son of God, and then he said, do this or do this or do this, right? He's attacking his identity. The same thing is happening here. And these people didn't realize that the devil was using them to shout the same thing at Jesus, if you are the son of God. And, and then he says, in the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him and saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him now come down from the cross and we will believe in him. They're mocking him. They're saying, we'll believe if you'll just do this thing that we are assuming that you would do if you really were the son of God. See, that was the problem. The reason they were saying that if you're the son of God that come down is because they were assuming that if he really was the son of God, that that is what he would do. Why? Because that's what they would do if they had that power. If they were the son of God, if they were God in flesh, they would pull themselves down off the cross and they'd get even with their enemies. And the reason they were making that assumption is because they didn't understand the love of God, the love that God had for the people of the world and even for them. Jesus hanging on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. 
That was the love of God being poured out, being demonstrated. The word of God says, this is how God demonstrates his love to us, that while we were yet sinners, while we were the people standing there hurling insults, while we were like those people, Jesus died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, the, the people that are standing there hurling insults, it's a picture of us on our worst day. And yet they didn't understand the love of God. And sometimes we make assumptions because we say, well, if I were God in this instance, this is what I would do. So this, is, this must be what God is doing. When it's not always the case. If I were God, I would do this in the nation. So God must be doing that. It's not always the case. So what is the answer? What is the answer to this paradox, right? This, this separation between our will and the will of God. We've got to make it personal again. We've got to come back to the Lord and we've got to say, Lord, I've been disconnected from you in this way. Maybe it's a little way. You know, maybe it's been a little while. Lord, I've been disconnected from your voice. Maybe I've been in the word. Maybe I've been going to church. Maybe I've been watching Christian videos. I don't know. Maybe I've been listening to prophecy online, whatever it is. It's like, I've been following you from a distance, Lord, but I need to come in to your presence myself and I need to get connected again. And I need to hear your voice for myself. Even if it's one word, I need to make it personal again. And I believe that for many people listening right now, that's the prayer that the Lord is leading you to pray. Lord, I want to make it personal again. I want to come back in and I want to hear from you for myself. I don't want to have to rely on somebody else. I don't want to have to wonder if I'm doing the right thing or not. I don't want to have to assume what you might say about this situation. I want to know what you're saying. I want to sense your leading hand again, Lord. I want to sense the hand of my shepherd. I heard the Lord say this earlier today. He said, make it personal again. Don't get caught up in the noise of religion or worldly ideas. You need a personal connection if you're going to make it through alive. God's not talking about physical life. He's not talking about dying. That's not what he's talking about. He's, he's talking about, Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and life to the full, abundant life. He's talking about being spiritually alive. See, the world is always looking for an answer to the problem of, why do I feel so dead inside? Christians shouldn't have to live that way. And many of us, you know, we all do this at times. We all get to a point sometimes where we don't realize that we're feeding that need and we're trying to fix that problem through something other than our creator, a personal connection with him. It could be something as good as Bible study, right? It could be something as good as like studying theology. It could be something as good as going to church or like ministering to people, but only us and God knows when that connection has been severed. Only us and God knows when there's a disconnect happening. There's a problem with the connection. I heard the Lord say this too. He said, when's the last time you spent time with me just to be with me? Not to get anything from me, but just to be with me. This is not a judgment call. This is a loving appeal. The Lord's saying, I love you. I want to be your all. I don't want you to think you can find those things somewhere else. That's not where true life is found. Jesus said, those who drink the water that I give them will never thirst again. And he's talking about the living water that he said would be bubbling up from within us and by this, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, he's saying there's this life that's going to be coming out of you that, that when people see it, they're going to see God for themselves. And they're going to say, man, I want some of that. Whatever it is, whatever you're into, I need that. And it's going to be the source we keep going back to day after day after day. And it's more fulfilling than any pleasure on earth. And it, it gives us peace more than any knowledge we could learn out there, anything that we could know. And it gives us direction more than any wisdom that we could hear from a wise person, from a Christian leader, from a friend, from someone online, whatever it is. It gives us direction. It gives us wisdom. It gives us peace. It gives us joy. You know, you, you have Paul and Silas. They're singing praises while they're in prison. It's like even while their lives were at stake, you know, like they didn't know what was going to happen to them. But they had this life inside of them that was so great and so fulfilling that it was just like overflowing out of them. That's what the life of Christ gives us. I want to pray and I want every person who you feel like, man, I need that and I've needed that for a while now, or just I've gotten my eyes off of Christ. I've gotten distracted by something else and I need to come back. I want you to pray along with me. I want you to say these words, say, Jesus, help me to make it all about you again. Help me to stop making this life about other things. You are what I really want, Lord. You're the one whose opinion really matters. You're the one whose presence in my life really makes a difference. Jesus, you said to your disciples, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Help us to stop looking past you to other things. Help us to continue looking to you in all things. Help us to make you our daily bread, Lord, the living water that we need daily. You are the Word made flesh, Jesus, and you're more than enough for us to satisfy our every need, our every want, our every desire, because we were designed to know you. We were designed to be with you, to walk with you personally. We were designed to be fed by you, Lord. You're the shepherd. We're the sheep, Lord. 
You lead us into green pastures. You, you lead us beside quiet waters. You restore our souls. You lead us in paths of righteousness. For your name's sake, lead us today, Jesus. We're coming back to you right now. Lord Jesus, we love you. I'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, where it's all about you. Yeah, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you. Yeah, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I just sense the Holy Spirit saying, I'm right here and I'm willing to change everything that needs changing. You just come in to my presence boldly through faith in what I've done for you. And I sense the Father saying, through faith in what my Son has done for you at the cross. You just come in daily and you get what you need from me, not from all the other places. And the Lord is saying, and I will begin to restore the parts of your life that have dried up. The parts that seem to be dead, I will bring new life to those spaces. The Lord is saying, and I will put a smile on your face again if that's what you need from me because my joy is enough. My joy is more than enough. The Lord's saying, I'm right here to give you all that you need. You just come in and you believe in what I've done. The Lord's saying, and be free. Be free to rest in me. Find my peace this year. Don't struggle in 2024, I hear the Lord saying. Don't struggle. Rest in what I've done for you. The Lord's saying, I have a good nature. I have a good character. You can trust me to lead you. You can trust me to provide for you. You can trust me to hold your hand to help you even through the dark things in life even through the trials, even through the tribulations, I'm right there. And I'm never gonna leave you. I hear the Lord saying, I'm never gonna leave you if you are mine. I just sense the Lord saying this for many people listening. You know me. Now come in and get fed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. God, I just thank you for your presence right now. I thank you for your peace that's descending upon us, Lord. That's filling the hearts of those listening, God. That's filling my heart, Lord. I thank you for your help, Holy Spirit, today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I hope this video has been encouraging y'all. Again, please hear what I'm sharing from the Lord, not, not what I'm not saying specifically. Don't jump to conclusions. But I believe the Lord is speaking though, and, and I believe that we are going to be able to look back and see that what God was saying is what's happening, that God really knows what he's talking about. So if y'all ever feel led to support this ministry of these videos, you can find out how to do that at troyblackvideos.com. But also I would encourage you, if you deal with worry, anxiety, stress, or even just you deal with trying to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit for yourself, I would encourage you to grab a copy of Stop Worrying. This is a book that I wrote back in 2020 and released. I mean, it has to do with all of these things. At least go check out the reviews on amazon.com. I believe that the Holy Spirit can use this book to begin to reveal some truths from the Word of God. There's a lot of scripture in there, uh, but it's presented in such a way to deal with and to help people that are struggling with these things, with worry, with anxiety, and with hearing the voice of God for themselves. So, um, I believe the Holy Spirit can use it to help you work through those things. So I love you all so much. I'll see you next time.